Photo Aging, Wikipedia Article Audio Photo aging or photo aging is a term used for the characteristic changes to skin induced by chronic UV and UVB exposure. 29 tretinoin is the best studied retinoid in the treatment of photo aging. Effects of UV light The deterioration of biological functions and ability to manage metabolic stress is one of the major consequences of the aging process. Aging is a complex, progressive process that leads to functional and aesthetic changes in the skin. This process can result from both intrinsic as well as extrinsic processes. Photoaging is attributed to continuous, long-term exposure to ultraviolet radiation of approximately 300-400 nm, either natural or synthetic, on an intrinsically aged skin. UVB rays are a primary mutagen that can only penetrate through the epidermal layer of the skin resulting in DNA mutations. These mutations arise due to chemical changes, the formation of cyclobutane pyrimidine dimers and photoproducts formed between adjacent pyrimidine bases. These mutations may be clinically related to specific signs of photoaging such as wrinkling, increasing in elastin and collagen damage. Molecular and Genetic Changes the epidermal layer does not contain any blood vessels or nerve endings but melanocytes and basal cells are embedded in this layer. Upon exposure to UVB rays, melanocytes will produce melanin, a pigment that gives the skin its color tone. However, UVB will cause the formation of freckles and dark spots, both of which are symptoms of photoaging. With constant exposure to UVB rays, signs of photoaging might appear and precancerous lesions or skin cancer may develop. Pigmentation UV rays are able to penetrate deeper into the skin as compared to UVB rays. Hence, in addition to the epidermal layer, the dermal layer will also be damaged. The dermis is the second major layer of the skin and it comprises collagen, elastin, and extrafibrillar matrix which provides structural support to the skin. However, with constant UVA exposure, the size of the dermis layer will be reduced, thereby causing the epidermis to start drooping off the body. Due to the presence of blood vessels in the dermis, UVA rays can lead to dilated or broken blood vessels which are most commonly visible on the nose and cheeks. UVA can also damage DNA indirectly through the generation of reactive oxygen species, which include superoxide anion, peroxide, and singlet oxygen. These ROS damage cellular DNA as well as lipids and proteins. Immunosuppression UV exposure can also lead to inflammation and vasodilation which is clinically manifested as sunburn. UV radiation activates the transcription factor, NF-kappa-B, which is the first step in inflammation. NF-kappa-B activation results in the increase of pro-inflammatory cytokines, for example, interleukin-1. IL-6 vascular endothelial growth factor, and tumor necrosis factor. This then attract neutrophils which lead to an increase in oxidative damage through the generation of free radicals. Degradation of collagen Additionally, UV radiation would cause the downregulation of an angiogenesis inhibitor, thrombospondin-1, and the upregulation of an angiogenesis activator which is platelet-derived endothelial cell growth factor, in keratinocytes. These enhance angiogenesis and aid in the growth of UV-induced neoplasms. Retinoic Acids and Photodamage It has been reported that UV radiation leads to local and systemic immunosuppression, due to DNA damage and altered cytokine expression. This has implications in cutaneous tumor surveillance. 
the longer Hans cells may undergo changes in quantity, morphology, and function due to UV exposure and may eventually become depleted. One proposed explanation for this immunosuppression is that the body is attempting to suppress an autoimmune response to inflammatory products resulting from UV damage. UV exposure would also lead to the activation of receptors for epidermal growth factor, IL-1, and TNF-alpha in keratinocytes and fibroblasts, which then activates signaling kinases throughout the skin via an unknown mechanism. The nuclear transcription factor activator protein, AP-1, which controls the transcription of matrix metalloproteinases, is expressed and activated. MMP1 is a major metalloproteinases for collagen degradation. This entire process is aided by the presence of reactive oxygen species that inhibits protein tyrosine phosphatases via oxidation, thereby resulting in the upregulation of the above mentioned receptors. Another transcription factor NF kappa B which is also activated by UV light, also increases the expression of MMP9. Signs, Symptoms, and Histopathology Defense Mechanisms Epidermal Thickness Pigment The upregulation of MMP can occur even after minimal exposure to UV, hence, Exposure to UV radiation which is inadequate to cause sunburn can thus facilitate the degradation of skin collagen and lead to presumably, eventual photoaging. Thus, collagen production is reduced in photoaged skin due to the process of constant degradation of collagen mediated by MMPs. In addition, the presence of damaged collagen would also downregulate the synthesis of new collagen. The impaired spreading and attachment of fibroblasts onto degraded collagen could be one of the contributing factors to the inhibition of collagen synthesis. Retinoic acid is essential for normal epithelial growth and differentiation as well as for maintenance of normal skin homeostasis. UV radiation decreases the expression of both retinoic acid receptors and retinoid X receptors in human skin thereby resulting in a complete loss of the induction of RA responsive genes. It also leads to an increase in activity of the AP1 pathway, increasing MMP activity and thus resulting in a functional deficiency of vitamin A in the skin. Early Symptoms of Photoaging Symptoms of photoaging attributed to prolonged exposure to UV in addition to the above symptoms, photoaging can also result in an orderly maturation of keratinocytes and an increase in the cell population of the dermis where abundant, hyperplastic, elongated and collapsed fibroblasts and inflammatory infiltrates are found. Photodamage can also be characterized as a disorganization of the collagen fibrils that constitute most of the connective tissue and the accumulation of abnormal, amorphous, elastin-containing material, a condition known as actinic elastosis. Endogenous defense mechanisms provide protection of the skin from damages induced by UV. UV exposure which would lead to an increase in epidermal thickness could help protect from further UV damage. Dispigmentation and the formation of wrinkles around regions of skin commonly exposed to sun, namely the eyes, mouth, and forehead, spider veins on face and neck, loss of color and fullness in lips. It has been reported in many cases that fairer individuals who have lesser melanin pigment show more dermal DNA photodamage, infiltrating neutrophils, keratinocyte activation, IL-10 expression, and increased MMPs after UV exposure. Therefore, the distribution of melanin provides protection from sunburn, photoaging, and carcinogenesis by absorbing and scattering UV rays. 
The damage of DNA due to exposure of UV rays will lead to expression of P53, thereby leading to eventual arrest of the cell cycle. This allows DNA repair mediated by endogenous mechanisms like the nucleotide excision repair system. In addition, apoptosis occurs if the damage is too severe. However, the apoptotic mechanisms decline with age, and if neither DNA repair mechanism nor apoptosis occurs, cutaneous tumorigenesis may result. TIMPs regulate the activity of MMP. Many studies have shown that UV rays would induce TIMP1. The skin contains several antioxidants, including vitamin E, coenzyme Q10, ascorbate, carotenoids, superoxide dismutase, catalase, and glutathione peroxidase. These antioxidants provide protection from reactive oxygen species produced during normal cellular metabolism. However, overexposure to UV rays can lead to a significant reduction in the antioxidant supply, thus increasing oxidative stress. Hence, these antioxidants are essential in the skin's defense mechanism against UV radiation and photocarcinogenesis. Treatment and intervention for photoaging can be classified into a unique paradigm based on disease prevention. Primary prevention aims to reduce the risk factors before a disease or condition occurs. Primary prevention for photoaging involves mainly sun protection that comes in many forms like sun avoidance, sun protective clothing, and sunscreens. UV exposure would be the strongest between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. in spring and summer, and sun avoidance is encouraged during these hours. If one cannot avoid exposure to the sun, then clothing, hats, and sunglasses that protect from sun exposure should be fully utilized. Broad-spectrum sunscreens that have a sun protection factor of at least 30 should be used when one gets frequent sun exposure. Secondary protection refers to early detection of disease, potentially while still asymptomatic, to allow positive interference to prevent, delay, or attenuate the symptomatic clinical condition. This includes the following, retinoids, antioxidants, estrogens, and growth factors and cytokines. Lastly, Tertiary prevention is the treatment of an existing symptomatic disease process to ameliorate its effects or delay its progress. Such tertiary prevention includes the use of chemical peels, resurfacing techniques, ablative or non-ablative laser resurfacing, radiofrequency technology, soft tissue augmentation, and botulinum toxins. Photorejuvenation procedures are performed by dermatologists to reduce the visible symptoms. Repair of DNA mutation and apoptosis. Tissue inhibitors of MMPs. Antioxidants. Treatment. Wrinkles deepen and forehead frown lines can be seen even when not frowning. Telangiectasia is most commonly seen around the nose, cheeks, and chin. Skin becomes leathery and laxity occurs. Solar lentigynes appear on the face and hands. Possibly precancerous red and scaly spots appear. Cutaneous malignancies. Primary prevention. Secondary protection. Tertiary prevention.